Hello, I'm Susie Henderson. I'm the owner of Auntie's Beads, and I'm here today to answer all your questions that you submitted about oh, beading and other things like that. And before we get started, I have two disclaimers. One is it is not a good hair day in Dallas, Texas. It is pouring rain, cats and dogs, and it's not doesn't make for good hair day. The other thing is, yes, I know I have in two different earrings. I didn't do it on purpose, but I got up very early, and it was dark, and they're too different, so I decided to keep it that way. Shawna did offer to make me some new ones, but I thought you all might enjoy that. Uh, you guys had a lot of questions. You really did, and so I picked the ones that I thought would pertain to the most people, and if we don't get to your question today, you'll get an email from us, uh, hopefully answering your question. This first one is from Heather. And she gives us some nice compliments. She's one of our Canadian customers. And she wanted to know, how do you keep your silver from tarnishing so quickly? Uh, silver naturally oxidizes uh, just by the chemicals in the air. Moisture, all sorts of things combined is going to help your silver to turn. I keep my silver beads closed up in a plastic container. Uh, you can also keep them in plastic bags, as you well know. Now, if you think about where you bead the most, my beading room is literally right off my bathroom. There's not even a door. It's a little alcove where I keep all my beads. So with all the moisture in the air just from simply being near a bathroom, I have to keep mine closed in plastic containers. The more you wear your silver, if you're talking specifically about silver pieces, the more you wear your silver, the prettier it will stay. It mixes with the oils in your body, and it's going to help your silver to stay prettier. So if it's silver jewelry, just start wearing it more or keep it closed up where all the air and the chemicals in the air can't get to it. The next one is about pewter and about when does pewter change as it's supposed to change. Pewter is an alloy, uh, and it is made mostly of tin, and it's going to oxidize and uh, patina, uh, like other metals would, just naturally. So it too should be closed up when you're not using it or not wearing it. My next question is from Jenny Doherty, and she wants to know how to keep organized. <sighs> that is a big question. It's a question we get all the time, and I can tell you what works for us most of the time. One of the cool tricks that we figured out is that most of the time you're not going to use a complete strand of beads. So what we started doing is cutting our strand of beads and crimping the leftovers. Now you can use a piece of tape if you don't want to use a crimp, but when you keep those beads on that strand, it's going to keep them from going everywhere. Another thing that we do that I personally love, and I do it at home also, is I keep my beads color coordinated in different bins. All my blue beads are in a bin, all my red ones are in a bin, brown, black, white, you got it. I have like five shelves right next to my beading board, and they have baskets on them, clear containers. And so all my beads are organized by color. Then my head pins, my crimps, my split rings, I keep in little containers that I got at the container store. They're $1.99. And I like them because the lid doesn't come off. The lid opens, but then you can snap it right back down. And that's how I keep those organized. So if I take out two head pins, I only use one, the other one goes back in. So that's how we do it here. Hopefully that'll help you a little. And, and if you have some ideas, you can send them on to us and we'll pass them along. The next one is from Steve. And we got a lot of this same question from Steve Strickland and several other people had pretty much the same question. And he asks, I'm just getting started getting interested in wire wrap jewelry and would love to know how to get started selling it as jewelry and how to price. Pricing is really very easy. If you have, if your particular piece costs you $10 to make, you're going to double the cost. So if you pay $10 for your materials, your piece is already at $20. Now, if you, you've got to pay yourself. That's really important. If you want to make $20 an hour and it took you 30 minutes to make that piece, then you'd add another $10 onto the 20 and you'd sell it for $30. 
So if your product costs you $10, you double it to $20. Then remember to pay yourself. It took you a half hour to make it. Add another $10 on. It's really very simple. Okay. Linda also, Linda Keto also had a question that many, many people asked me and asked me a lot. And that's how do I find a venue to sell my work? Now we have a lot of these tips on our website. Um, and you are welcome and I hope you do go and check that out. But we get that a lot. Where do I sell my work? How did you get started? And I started doing home shows uh, 13 years ago. That is how I began. Uh, set up in a friend's home and she had several women over for coffee and coffee cake on a Sunday afternoon and I had a really good day and I had several people from that one show who invited me to their home. In return for her letting me come sit up in her home, I gave her back 15% of sales in free product and I continued that way for several months. And I don't want to say it kind of fell into my lap, but it really did. And that is, I, one person asked me to come sit up in her office. And just by that one person sitting up in her office, you know, I figured there had to be a lot more offices that would let me come in. So by the end of the second year, I, had, I could have been uh, sitting up in an office building every day of the week. And then that progressed to doing schools, and I set up in teachers' lounges, which I really liked because my kids were still small enough that I could leave after they went to school, and I was always home when they got home from school. So I enjoyed that. From there, I started doing craft shows, and I got into a large craft show uh, called Country Peddler. Uh, they're mainly in Texas and Oklahoma, and I started doing that for probably two to three years before we built the website. But that's how I sold my jewelry, and it worked for me. And what I really learned is if you're passionate about what you do, you can't help but be a success. When I started beading, it all opened all sorts of doors for me because I fell in love with it. I was so excited about my product. I was so excited about the, mixing the colors and doing things a different way. I think people just naturally saw that you loved it. So if you loved it, you know somebody else is going to love it too. So let me just touch on one thing very quickly about you selling your product. Don't forget how important presentation is. The way you present your jewelry is almost as important as how the jewelry looks. Presentation, I used to tell people, is everything. It's kind of like in real estate, they say location, location, location. In selling your product, it is presentation, presentation, presentation. Go to different stores and get some ideas of what you think is beautiful. Get some ideas of what draws you in and then try to repeat that for your presentation. I think that will help out a lot.